a smaller town. That's right. Go three times, nobody show up. That'd be perfect for you, wouldn't it? That's right. <laughs> <laughs> what's Genesis open here? <laughs> Um, what have you seen, Virginia's been struggling a little bit lately, but what have you seen from them that, that concerns you about the way they play? Obviously the defense, but, but overall and... and uh, well, you know, I'd probably disagree that they've been struggling. They're in the ACC, <coughs> well, they're playing good teams. Yeah. To, you know, they lose at Syracuse, they lose at Virginia Tech, they lose at Villanova. You know, most people will lose at those places. Uh, they're at the top of the league in three-point shooting percentage, uh, first or second. They're uh, first or second in defensive rebound percentage, so they don't give up a lot of second shots. Uh, it is still their defense is really good. Uh, their shooting percentage is really good, so they know the right guys are getting the shots. Uh, London is a tremendous four leader for them. Uh, the two young guys, uh, uh, Ty and Guy, Drawing a blank all of a sudden. Uh, oh, Ty Jerome, I didn't think of it, I saw it. Ty Jerome and uh, a guy gave him two freshmen coming off the bench who can really score. Uh, they did lose two big guys up front that were really good for them. Uh, but Salt's given a lot of good moments up there, and Wilkins is playing with a, a sense of urgency in everything he plays. So I think it is a still a vintage uh, Virginia club under Tony that they don't beat themselves. They make you work extremely hard for your baskets. If you come down and take a quick shot, it's sort of silly because now you got to go back and play defense for 25 seconds before you get a chance to go on offense again. So it makes every possession even more meaningful. And they're used to that. And the other teams, a lot of teams in our league, play at a much faster pace. And each individual possession doesn't mean as much to teams at a fast pace as it does Virginia. But they're used to it. And, uh, you know, so it's, it, and my answers look like last year, if I asked us what we were, what was going wrong, I mean, we were still pretty good, but we lost at Louisville, at Notre Dame, at Virginia, and at, uh, I left somebody out in there, but uh, they're still a really good basketball team, and uh, yeah, they've lost the last two at Virginia, and uh, lose to Duke, and uh, last time I looked, we lost to Duke also, so uh, I think it's more of a typical Tony Bennett club with, a little bit of an influx of younger guys who uh, don't know they're supposed to feel pressure. <laughs> I mean, I see Guy Jerome take some of those shots. I'm thinking Tony's cringing and it goes in, you know, so they don't feel that pressure of what each uh, possession is like as much as the older guys do. So when we see losses and maybe struggling, you still see a team that's playing very well. Yeah. I mean, the other night in the Virginia Duke game, I mean, all of a sudden, you don't expect a guy to make four threes in the last, whatever it was, four or five minutes in a row. And uh, uh, I'm just, I'm at the 12-minute mark of the game uh, today. I've been watching it today, and uh, uh, they're, they're really a good basketball team. How do you go about preparing your team for the vast uh, difference in pace and style of play and, and all that kind of stuff? Um, same way I've always done. I've always said I like to win. And, uh, 80s and 90s, but to be a really good team, you got to win in the 50s and 60s as well. And uh, we understand that. And uh, so you talk to them about it, you practice it, get the uh, blue team to be more patient with their shot selection, and uh, and get the uh, the white team to make sure that they get a better shot, not just the first shot they look at, but the first great shot they look at. That's what you want. But uh, you know, it was uh, we played really, really well last year in the ACC tournament. And, win the game by four points, 61-57. And uh, you know, we played pretty good against uh, Indiana a couple games later. I think we made Marcus make four threes before the first time out. So you got to be able to play the game. If you can only play one way, I don't think you can you know, make a consistent run through this league for sure. But uh, even nationally, I think you got to be able to try to play and be able to play more than one way because you're not always in charge. If, it, if we were always in charge, it, it would always be 90 to 100, but the other team has the right to do that, and they choose the way they play. Are those always kind of weird practices for you, having to slow your guys down and watch that and stay there? Not really. I'd, I'd like to take a great shot every time. I mean, I was ticked off the other night. Some of the daggum shots were shooting away, and we got a 20-point lead. So I like great shots. If they come in the first five seconds, that's 
more fun, but they don't. I, if it comes between 25 and 30, I still rather have a great shot than a mediocre shot. So it's, it's just the way you want to play. I play golf faster. I don't take long to golf either. So it's, it's what it is. <laughs> Roy, uh, Larry Fedora, over the years, like for Georgia Tech, for example, with that triple option, they'll devote you know, a day or two randomly to focus just on that. Do you do that in the preseason and throughout the course of the year to devote to some slower tempos? No, we try to do what we do and know that over the course of the season of 32 games that you will have to change uh, because, again, I mean, around here everybody thinks it's, it's only what we do that makes a difference, but those other people have a say in it too. So uh, we, uh, we do prepare, um, talk about it a lot, but if it's my choice, I try to get Tony to play the way I like to play. <laughs> but he feels really good about the way that he plays and his choice is to try to make it a little bit slower. And they take really good shots. I mean, they're a good offensive team. It's, uh, I saw one graphic the other night, the number of shots they take in the last 10 seconds of the shot clock. I don't like that for us, but you know, he's a big time basketball coach who does a great job. And so, uh, again, it's not all in our control. I mean, you can go run and trap and double, and so they'll make two passes and dunk it. Now, how smart do you feel? You know, and that kind of stuff. So, you just got to uh, try to force the tempo without uh, giving up what you truly believe in. What was your reaction just to the news out of Raleigh yesterday with Mark? Uh, you know, with the news a couple of days before, you know, you know there's something out there. It was, a, it was disappointing. I'm a coach, I'm not an athletic director, I'm a coach. I think we should fire more athletic directors. Not <laughs> 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 hard right there. I'd say hard. Right? I'd say, I'd say, I'd make the decisions. That gun. We're just, it's like me firing my point guard. I recruited his butt. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm trying to be a little humorous there because it's a sad thing because Mark's, Mark's whole family's got to go through it. It's not just him. I do have one strong feeling. I've said this forever. I'm in trouble with my athletic director at Kansas when I'm four left there. I don't think any college coach should be fired during the season. It's college basketball, it's college sports, it's college athletics. If you want to make a decision as an athletic director, that's your right. Uh, but I just, uh, I just, I don't like that part of it, but I'm not the athletic director. I'm definitely not the athletic director in North Carolina State. And, uh, she had to make her decisions, what she thought was best, but uh, I have always had that feeling that no college coach should be fired in, in the middle of the season. So it's sad, sad for his family, and uh, you know, it's, it's hard. Coaching's hard, coaching's hard in this league, but uh, firing a coach is not always an answer. You have any signature memories of the games against him? Or? Yeah, some good, some bad. You know, uh, Marcus's layup over there, shoot out with uh, Marcus and T.J. Warren. One of the two dumbest fouls we've ever made in the history of basketball. Fouling guys 60 feet from the ball with two seconds left to play and we had a two-point lead. Uh, so I uh, memory's good and bad, but uh, it's been, uh, uh, there have been some big time games. I mean, they really have. And Marcus uh, always, I was about real willing to see if we could get the kind of ball they used over and just paint it, make it look like an Nike ball, let him shoot with that one. Because he made a bunch of shots over there, made more shots over there than he ever did here. What else I like seeing him there then the other night behind the bench? Never saw him. Under his air, I left him the ticket, but uh, I got enough to worry about what he was going on on the court without worrying. I always check to see my family, my wife's there, my kids are there, whatever. Other than that, I don't really look around too much in the stands. What do you make of the discussion anytime they have a vacancy that it's so tough because Roy and Kay are right there in the backyard. Do you kind of chuckle when you hear that? Uh, I really don't pay any attention to it. You know, I was offered the job at State or made it. The original call was made to me 100 years ago. I said, how in the dickens can I come coach at State? You know, I mean, that just doesn't make sense. But uh, I was called and asked about it on two different occasions when I was at Kansas. But uh, it's a great job, great school, great athletic program in the ACC, uh, a lot of basketball tradition. But it's a hard job. Everyone in this league's a hard job. You won't have some spells where things don't go as smoothly as you want them to go. What was that? I, I had no idea that you were offered the job. You don't have to know every damn thing I do. <laughs> <laughs> Is that in the Constitution? I'm looking at the Constitution to see if North Carolina's 
responsible for everything. I don't have to do that. That wasn't in your book. That's right. And I said, <laughs> gave you guys something special. <laughs> All those jerks that didn't come over here because they're watching the golf tournament, they're smarter, but they didn't get what you got. <laughs> well, since you brought it up, how many jobs were you offered before Kansas? Oh, that was pretty easy. Uh, three or four. I almost took one, but uh, didn't do it. That was in the book. I didn't read that chapter. <laughs> you should have read that. I will this weekend. No, Tim Crows did a great job. If I'd written it by myself, it would be terrible. Anybody else? Yeah, I got some um, What do you expect um, with Kenny Williams out? I mean, how's it going to kind of change how you approach rosters and lineups and things like that? Well, it's nothing to do about rosters. We can't pull anybody up in the D League. So lineups we, work. We yes. don't change that. but. Uh, he was our best perimeter defender. Uh, I sure can't get Kennedy Meeks to play defense on the defender like I had Kenny doing. <laughs> so, are you part of the media now? Yeah, I was about to ask you a question. That's good. <laughs> you ask me a question, I don't have to answer yours. <laughs> You're all right. I'm about a little pressure, you go running out. <laughs> uh, you know, he was our best perimeter defender, and when the jump shots went in, he was really a talented player. He really helped us a great deal. Uh, Notre Dame game, he was sensational during that game. He was not only make three threes, but he was really good defensively. Uh, so it's a big loss, and, you know, getting Theo back makes it a little easier because you're not, you know, you're sort of trading off, but uh, uh, Theo's not as good defensively as Kenny. Theo does some other great things for you. Brings Stillman back in the mix a little bit more. Uh, I think Seven's getting a little better. His stats in ACC play <coughs> a little better than they were in non-conference play. But it does change things up. Uh, you know, even in practice, trying to change guys over from the blue team, the white team, to go over what you're getting ready to work for when you're getting ready to play Virginia. And uh, now I've got to make more changes to get the guys over there. So. You never want to lose a guy that's important to your team, and he must have been pretty important to our team. I started him, and so that part's difficult, though. But it's even more difficult for him because uh, nobody wants to get hurt, especially this time of year when uh, going down those last three or four weeks of the regular season and the possibility of tournament play coming up is really when he gets to be fine. How has Kenny handled this? Uh, really handling it uh, very well so far. Very emotional and very tough at first. Uh, but. Uh, if you'd seen him on the bench, uh, when Seventh made the spin move and laid it up, he was pretty active, jumping around on one leg. I asked him if that was a new dance routine, but uh, uh, he's, he's doing well. He's already been in the scene this morning. There are a, a lot of prime ACC games these last three or four weeks, and it seems like it's you know kind of made for TV purposes. And tell me it's the computer, boys. I'm on telling you what they tell me. <laughs> so the computer does all of it, which I think is uh, questionable. But, uh, yeah, we played Virginia twice in nine days, got Louisville, got Duke twice in two and a half weeks or whatever it was. So uh, every, there's a lot of teams that really have some big time games right now. And maybe it's that way in uh, every league. Ours is, you can sort of hide behind anything because it's an unbalanced schedule. You know, if it was balanced, you'd play everybody twice, you'd have to expose yourself a little bit more about how those decisions were made. But, you know, they say it's a computer driven by me, and that's okay because I can't even turn the daggum thing on, so I don't mess with it. Would you prefer, would you prefer more balance throughout the schedule in terms of winning the marquee game, so to speak? I don't, think you, I don't think you know necessarily right. before the season starts which are the marquee names, but I would definitely like to play a slippery rock early and then spend some time, or somebody else early, but I don't like playing teams twice in a short time period, and it works out this year that the they're really some of the elite teams in the league. I know you have a lot on your mind during the season, but has it ever crossed your mind helping yes. an assisting? <laughs> has it ever crossed your mind helping assisting players for their career after college? Is that ever a goal for you? Uh, only every day I breathe. And, uh, I may have misunderstood the question. Well, I mean, every I, day I do things to try to help our guys. I mean, I was on the phone today with Nick Collison. He played for me one school ago because that's part of my job. Uh, I talk to guys all the time about what they're going to do, when they're going to do it. I'm making calls all the time, trying to help them get situated. Uh, uh, 
Is that what you were talking about? Yeah. Oh, yeah. It never stops. It like, never specifically stops. for Justin, he going to the combine this summer and he... Oh, Lord. We're not talking about the NBA. I can right. get a flip feed. Okay, that's what I was live about. right now. Damn, it's college season now. As soon as the season's over, we'll talk about it, Justin. And I talked about it. Are you going to ask me a question on day two? Kennedy came in here wanting to ask a question. Okay. No, the focus, <laughs> the focus has got to be on our college season. Yeah, but yet, you can ask every player, every player that's ever coached for me. I'm always concerned about them individually, and we talk about it all the time. But right now, we talk about uh, North Carolina. I've got four kids that signed, in, signed with us in high school. I have not spoken to one of those kids and talked to them about their jump shot because I am not their coach right now. Their coach is trying to get them to be the best high school player they can be. At the end of the season, I bring every kid in and we talk about what kind of job he wants, what he wants to be doing in five years, ten years, really contribute to my retirement account or anything and everything. <laughs> but uh, uh, there's a place and a time for those conversations uh, uh, about everything uh, and not just uh, what they're going to do. But uh, uh, I'm even dumb enough, I'm sending out little postcards to every player that ever post played for me that says thanks because there's an 800 number on the postcard for their part in doing this. So uh, I think I have uh, contact with them all the time about everything. All right, Justin's here. We'll yeah. Switch.